Hello viewers. In this video, I will present to you the direct shear experiment. The direct shear experiment is done by the direct shear device, as you can see here. The direct shear device consists of a control unit that is connected to a motor and this motor controls the displacement of a shear box. Inside this shear box there is a loading frame for the soil sample. This frame is connected to the proving ring. This proving ring has a dial gauge inside that measures the displacement or the deformation that happens which will be converted to a loading value and also there is a displacement horizontal displacement gauge to measure the horizontal displacement of the sample above the sample there is a vertical dial gauge this measures the vertical deformation or displacement that happens from the sample. As you can see here, this frame is the normal loading frame. It's connected to an arm. This arm has a shaft and a holding disc to support certain weights as you will see now. This is the shaft. These are the weights. We place the weights like this. Each weight is like 1 kg, 2 kg, 3 kg. Whatever weight we want is placed on this loading frame, normal loading frame, and the load is transferred through the arm with a moment on top of the sample. Amplifies the load. So if you put 1 kg, for example, it will amplify it 10 times. In this case, each device has its own amplification factor. This for sure makes us use less weights instead of using an actual weight on the sample. Also, you can see here there is a rotating wheel that controls a screw that holds the arm in its place. So we, can, we don't load the sample directly. We just release the screw once the sample is placed inside the shearing frame. These are the top and bottom shearing frame. Inside this we will place the soil sample with the porous stones and top and lower plates. As you can see the sample should be exactly fit in the middle and the shearing frame will move to the right by the shear box while the top part will be fixed to the proving ring and its frame so we can measure the horizontal load. This is the top view of the direct shear device. Now let's go to the sample preparation phase. According to ASTM standard D3080, we can either prepare a sample from an intact sample from the site or a fabricated sample in the lab. What we are doing here 
is the fabricated sample in the lab. The fabricated samples in the lab can be done by reconstitution or compaction. Reconstituted samples shall be prepared using the compaction method. Water content and mass density prescribed by the requirements from the site. Specimens may be molded by either kneading or tamping each layer until the accumulative mass of the soil placed in the shear box is compacted, reconstituted to a known volume, or by adjusting the number of layers, the number of tamps per layer, and the force per tamp. The top of each layer shall be scarified prior the addition of material for the next layer. The compacted layer boundaries shall be positioned so that they are not coincident with the shear plane defined by the shear box halves, unless this is the stated purpose for a particular test. After we reconstitute the sample, we trim the surface and make sure it's flat. The preparing of the sample should match the density of the sample in the site from where it was taken. Slowly, slowly, we reconstruct the sample, reconstitute the sample until we reach the desired result. Let's go to the phase of placing the sample in the shear box. First, we will place the lower frame. And we fix this lower frame to the shear box with the screws. Then we place a lower plate, then a lower porous stone below the sample, then the, the top frame, and then the cut sample. Now we push the sample inside with a tamping rod until it fits correctly. Then we place the top porous stone and we place the top piston. Now we need to place the normal loading frame as you can see on the top piston and we adjust the vertical dial gauge so we can measure the vertical displacement we need to make sure that the vertical dial gauge is touching the top of the normal loading frame so we can measure the deformation that happens on the specimen or from the specimen we zero the horizontal dial gauge and the gauge inside the proving ring and now slowly we release the load by rotating the wheel on the bottom of the shear device. Releasing the load will slowly subject the sample to a consolidation. We 
we need to make sure that we take the reading of the vertical gauge before we release the vertical load or the normal load and as we release the vertical load or the normal load vertical deformation will occur because the sample is consolidated after we make sure all the dull gauges are zero of the horizontal and the proving ring gauges we start the test and slowly you can see that the proving ring is deforming and it's shown by the dial gauge the white dial gauge in the center the yellow dial gauge as you see in the picture will measure the displacement the horizontal displacement that happens to the sample our goal here is to record the horizontal displacement and the readings of the proving ring at each specified interval as per the standard the loading process will continue until the proving ring load either stops from increasing for a certain amount of time or returns slightly backward this indicates that the sample reached its maximum load then the load is starting to decrease as you can see now the load is still increasing thus we continue the test and record the results from the horizontal gauge and the proving ring range gauge and the vertical gauge As you can see now, the proving ring stopped increasing the load. We will continue the test further a little bit until we either see the load is stopping 
constant or decreasing in this case it is decreasing back again as you can see the load is decreasing and the horizontal displacement is increasing After we record all the readings, we stop the test. We remove the vertical load placed on the sample by readjusting the wheel at the bottom of the direct shear device. As you can see here, once the load is released, the proving ring will return to its original place and the gauge will go back fast. We remove the top piston of the sample and the top porous stone and the top frame. Now you will see what happened to the sample. We unscrew the lower frame so we can remove it. As you see now the sample is sheared in the middle directly. This concludes the direct shear test.